Before we, we move on, let's take a minute and consider some characteristics of turbulent versus laminar boundary layers. So for a laminar boundary layer, the flow is steady. And the velocity profile looks something like this. The viscosity is just constant everywhere. And the shear stress, tau, will be maximum at the wall and will drop to zero at the edge. So tau, the laminar, is just mu du dn. For a turbulent boundary layer, it's unsteady at the small scale. So this leads to turbulent mixing. Which means more momentum from the main flow outside the boundary layer the boundary layer um, from foot is transported inside now along with this we get a transport of apparent viscosity or shear stress. And this is what people will often refer to as turbulent shear stress or Reynolds stress. And this means that we can write that the, the turbulent shear stress is some turbulent eddy viscosity times the UDN. So that now the total shear stress is the laminar plus the turbulent contribution, which is mu plus mu T the UDN. So for the turbulent boundary layer, in contrast to the laminar one, the profile is much flatter near the wall and sharply rises. It's maybe a little too exaggerated. There we go. That's better. The viscosity, which is mu plus mu t, if this is mu, now starts there and then quickly rises before coming back down. And the shear stress is how? Is maximum at the wall again and decreases but is much fatter. And you can Identify a region here where the shear stress is essentially constant. The turbulent viscosity is essentially linear, and the velocity profile is very uh, steeply sloped. And we call this region the wall layer. Note that the turbulent uh, viscosity is much larger than the uh, fluid viscosity over most of the boundary layer, except for this small region in the wall layer, which occupies about 20% of the boundary layer thickness. And in that region, here tau is about constant at the wall shear stress. 
So the key difference between the laminar and turbulent cases is that the turbulent boundary layer has a higher velocity near the wall. This increases the resistance to adverse pressure gradients by, in practice, at least a factor of five. So this effect is critical to lift generation because it delays the viscous decambering we discussed in the last lecture. But the drawback is that the wall shear stress in the turbulent case is much larger than in the laminar case, which means skin friction and profile drag are decreased. So in conclusion, we want laminar flow in favorable or mildly adverse pressure gradients, while we want turbulent flow in strongly adverse pressure gradients. So now that we've begun talking about how boundary layers respond to pressure gradients, let's look at this in more detail. So boundary layer responds to pressure gradients as well as shear gradients. So we've said before uh, much earlier in the course, using 1D momentum arguments, that slower flow responds more strongly to pressure gradients, which gives rise to reverse flow and separation in boundary layers. Let's now examine this in more detail and look at shear gradient effects as well. So let's temporarily redefine our SN coordinates to be parallel and perpendicular to a streamline in the boundary layer. So this means that by definition V is zero and the S momentum equation is going to give us rho U D V S is equal to rho e e e d e d s plus d tau d n. Remember, this is our grad p term. So if we consider the change in fluid velocity delta u over a small distance delta s, which is approximately d u d s times delta s, then that, using this momentum equation, is given by rho e u e over rho u times d u e d s times delta s plus 1 over rho u d tau d n delta s. By the same argument, this is approximately delta UE so that we can write delta U is approximately rho E UE over rho U delta UE plus 1 over rho U e tau dn delta S. So this is the effect of the streamwise pressure gradient. And what we see is that there's a factor of rho e u e over rho u that is always going to be larger than one in the boundary layer, which amplifies the change in, u, in delta u compared to uh, the change in u e delta u e. So the absolute value of delta u is always larger than the absolute value of delta u e. So what this means is that if we have a favorable, which means dp 
ds is negative, then an initial velocity profile, it maybe looks like this. So here's ue, here's u of, of n. Well, when subject to a favorable pressure gradient, Here's the profile that's drawn here. It will deform in the following way. So here's a delta UE, which is positive, and here's delta U of N, which is greater than delta UE. In terms of shear stress, We'll go from the original case of having a profile that looks something like this to a more curved profile with a with more of a gradient at the wall. Whereas for an adverse pressure gradient, the PBS positive. And starting with the same boundary layer, the velocity will be slightly reduced out here, but the reduction will increase so that delta u e is less than zero here and here u or sorry delta u will have an absolute value that's greater again than delta u e and further if this adverse pressure gradient is strong enough this flow may actually reverse here which leads to separation if that occurs, the mass defect rapidly increases as, as well as does the viscous dissipation. To complete the comparison, the shear stress, which again started from something like this, now looks something more like that. So it's been increased out here and decreased down here. Whereas in this case, it was increased here and decreased here. So it's the opposite effect uh, for the shear stress as well. So what we see is that DPDS is not a function of n in the boundary layer. But this is not the case for d tau dn. This is tau very strongly in the boundary layer. Um, and this means that the shear is applying different force to different fluid elements at various S locations in the boundary layer. And there are two main effects of this. So the first is a flattening of the velocity profile. And an increase of the overall boundary layer thickness. And you can see that basically by this flattening what we mean is that there's now larger regions where the profile is essentially linear. And two, since d tau dn and delta ue generally have opposite sign, Um, the shear partially counters the delta un that would be caused by the grad p. 
So it somewhat mitigates this effect seen here.